This is a brand new show, a brand new show for the new year, 2022. Uh, we would like to warmly welcome you uh, for crossing over from 2021 to the new year. Uh, the first program that we are having, we promised last year that we would be continuing our programming uh, on the subject of counterfeits and fakes because they are not about to go away. We still actually have uh, a big problem on our hands. Uh, last week, uh, those who joined us, we had uh, an interesting discussion, conversation uh, with uh, a pastor, uh, a minister uh, from the Pentecostal uh, Christian faith, uh, Pastor Male. Uh, the feedback we're having is that uh, it was quite informative, educative, and uh, we thought that our very first show in the year uh, should try to balance things out. Uh, so we have on the show uh, today uh, a Muslim scholar, uh, but as well uh, an, el an enlightened gentleman who will help us uh, to have a discussion about counterfeits from the Islamic faith perspective. Uh, so please join me to welcome Dr. Sulaiman Luja uh, to the show. Dr. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, how was last year? Ah, last year was good. We thank God for that. That we survived the, survived the corona COVID. and all these things. We are still pushing and uh, we are still connecting to our God. Dr. Luja is, he'll be speaking about himself, but what I can tell you is that uh, he holds a PhD in Islamic banking and he heads Islamic investment, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Islamic investment at the Uganda Microfinance Support Center. Is that a correct description? But he's also, uh, you hold a bachelor's in Sharia law yeah. uh, from Medina Islamic University in Saudi Arabia. Sure, Islamic is University in Medina. Islamic University in Medina. In Medina yeah. uh, so you are an authority uh, in Islamic studies, affairs, at the same time you are an authority in finance, banking, Islamic investment. I cannot claim to be an authority, but I am resourceful. I can benefit because when you say you are an authority. Yes. <laughs> you know these days, uh, doctor, <laughs> yeah. uh, you'll watch, you'll tune BBC or CNN and you'll find some white guy saying he's an expert on uh, Uganda, on the Great Lakes, and, and he's speaking and the whole audience, a billion people are listening. So, uh, uh, I think you need to wear that hat as well. For us, for this show, uh, you're somebody who is knowledgeable and sure. you should be helping to uh, give us a perspective. You watched the, 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 the last show, I am sure, of uh, Pastor Male, and uh, he was uh, quite angry and upset at the status quo. One of the things he, he was talking about was... Uh, uh, people at the top, uh, at the pulpit, are uh, exploiting uh, the weak, the poor, they are taking from them. And he was condemning it and uh, he was saying we should be returning to the biblical ways and the teachings. <clears throat> what is the position in Islam? What is happening in the mosques? Uh, are things any better? Uh, are things different? Do you have faking there as well? Ye yes. Uh, uh, thank you, Council. I think this subject cuts across. It is everywhere. Although the authenticity is still remaining, is still maintained to a certain level, but I don't know what's wrong with Africa and what's wrong especially with Uganda, because you find that uh, just like uh, we have the same story also, like Pastor Mali said last week or last year, uh, it is the same also 
I don't know why people have taken religion. What is happening exactly? Are you also having imams or clerics who are misleading people and, uh, and uh, for example, telling them to, we have it in the, some churches, uh, some pastor comes up and says, bring, bring, bring whatever you have, I will help you to multiply it. And they just steal it. Yeah, are you having this also? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, 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 in our side, I, I think it has not reached that extent. Of fake, the fakeness has not reached that extent. Only that maybe some, uh, some people, some imams are taking it as a business. O on our side, it's not fake to that extent. Because these are people, he, what he testified here, it is as if 90% of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the what, of uh, the, the profits, even people are calling themselves profit, but we don't have it. In in our Islam, side, in we Islam, don't we don't profits. have it. We don't have it. Only that people come and uh, they take it as a religion. Uh, 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 it, they, are, they are worshipping. They are telling the truth. But it has become a business. There are no profits. We, we don't have profits. I cannot say that what they are selling. Okay, they are selling religion. What they are teaching is fake. It's not fake, but... They are gaining out of it. They are overdoing it. it. How can I say? Because as you said, I, had your, uh, I saw your, your show. You, you can walk like... Uh, just 500 meters, you find a mosque. Another 300 meters, you find another mosque. The same. Church, 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 church. What are they doing? Why, why can't you agree, like, uh, in, uh, in a radius of, like, one kilometer, you have one mosque, you go to and that. And you all congregate and you worship, all congregate and one, you worship one God. Because uh, you will find that here you will have a congregation, another one is a congregation. Now, what will they will start? It will start fighting for followers. If you have, like, 100 and the other mosque is having uh, 200, you will fight to, ha to have the other ones added to your mosque. So if, if, if we believe that uh, we have the same gospel we are spreading, it, it is good that at least one <coughs> kilometer in, th in that radius, let's, let's all th uh, let, let all those people combine in that mosque. Because for us, we believe uh, in Islam that uh, the distance you take walking to the mosque, you are rewarded. Every step you take, you are rewarded. Now, why do you want a mosque uh, just... Uh, every 10 meters. Every 10 meters. You are reducing on your rewards. So, but, but, but the extent, uh, the rate is not like, uh, uh, is not like that of the, the, the what, uh, our counterparts. We have not reached that far. Although but I you're coming. Say, you're, you're reached there <laughs> if you don't do anything. No, although to some extent we have... Uh, but these ones are not sheikhs. They are not imams of mosques. The fake uh, people who can say that they are healing, they can pray for you and you get a visa. What kind of prayer is that? <laughs> we have the sheikhs. You, you, you can uh, see them and even they are advertising in uh, some new uh, uh, social medias or me media stations. They, they, they pray are, they for are you. Praying you can for get people. A money. You uh -huh. can get a man. Uh -huh. You can get a visa. A job. You can produce. If you have lost a property, you can find it with that prayer. Uh, the public needs to be aware of those. But we are not taking off the imams, the real imams who are leading the prayers in the mosques. Uh, we don't, those ones, we don't have the fake ones. Only that uh, the, the rate as, at, which, uh, at which it is developing, is, it is too high. So, uh. so, who is not doing their work? Is it the Muslim leadership that is not doing their work? Or is it just the moral decay uh, in society, the corruption that is responsible for this? Who is to blame for, for this state of affairs? Maybe this false hope. Mm? I don't know how I can term it. People are turning to it and uh, you find uh, most of them are not working. They are leaving their jobs. They are leaving their work all the time being in the mosque. We have uh, uh, one of the caliphs. One of the caliphs of uh, in what Islam. Is a caliph? A caliph is a uh, 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 the leader who came after Prophet Muhammad, these people who followed him, huh? uh, the four, the four, four guided caliphs, Umar. Like the disciples for uh -huh. the Christians. Yes, mm -hmm. when he went. The second one was Umar. Whenever he could find them, uh, during the time of work, after the prayers, you have to go out and work. He used to flock them. He used to, uh, to fight them outside, to please go outside the mosque. Even oh, the verses, like we have also Jesus whipped the people who are in the temple. Yes, we have even the, the verses. There are uh, uh, a couple of verses there.
fa idha qudiyat as-salatu fantashiru fil ardi wa bitagu min fadlillah if you finish the prayers please you have to go out and start looking for working god you, wants you to start work. work god mm. wants you when you can sustain your family not to sustain just as he said the pastor said not to sustain the the the, 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 the what the sheikh not to sustain the pastor no 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 you have to sustain your family <coughs> and you can find god everywhere even in your house you can pray everywhere you can pray so according to you what should be done to get the muslim faithfuls the christian faithfuls back on track do you think that uh, for example the government policy of liberalization where you is a free economy free market economy i didn't i didn't know that it was also a free religious economy mm. uh, do you think we need government to interfere in these religious affairs and regulate where a church should be a mosque should be maybe even regulate behavior don't you think the people at the pulpit the imams the the leadership should be the ones to do it because we have we are liberalized uh, and therefore you shouldn't have a lot of government in Interfing. regulating religion because we are confused you you now cannot tell a genuine it's now not easy to tell a genuine faithful of for a people. local person yes mm. what, what do you think should be done uh government the uh, government the should not interfere but uh, i i think it goes back to the religious institutions the mainstream for example the for in the muslim sect in, in, in the muslim side we have the uganda muslim supreme council for example on the christian side they have uh, even their institution big institutions to go out and guide them and even government at some extent should come in to regulate somehow not to make it commercial because now it has become commercial you find even in residential areas people are turning their houses the residential place into into places of worship very early in the morning at four uh, these guys are waking up with microphones they are calling people you can rarely sleep at night it has gone it's happening really both beyond. for it's the commercial now for the muslims and christians oh, they are competing to, to to make as much noise as possible that is noise because uh, you, you you have to spread your gospel now you are making noise to the whole village people who want to pray for example they have come to the mosque or they have come to the church now why do you have the speakers uh, 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 saturating the voice the voices the noises all over the world the village I people who are interested in shout, prayers mm. uh, the more they they, they 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 make the noise and you praise the more you are doing god's work no 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 people who are interested in the prayers they have come to the mosque already now you see if you go to uh, the middle east and even in europe they, they are they are already having regulations they have regulated those noises you please uh, if you have built a church or a mosque that noise have has to stay within that radius of the mosque but here in africa when you come to uganda it is the opposite all the streets you will find the what uh, oh, you, so they are not people supposed calling. to put the speakers out there no no, no 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 because you are preaching to these ones who are inside the mosque or, or who are inside the what the church now why do you come with them in fact you can find someone not having anyone but he is having a microphone making noise for the whole village for the whole village making noise for the whole streets here in Kampala so, so you see there, there is uh, maybe that is where government needs to come in to regulate to regulate because, because there is a in Europe no, you have been moving pollution. yes noise pollution and uh, you okay you have freedom but even others have freedom even others have freedom in europe you have been walking moving around have you ever seen such in europe in streets of europe or middle east you cannot find anywhere but in uganda you can find every two meters you find another one with a speaker calling calling who because if people are interested in you they should come they should come to you they should come to the uh, to the mosque if it is the mosque they should come to the church if it is the church but you find someone in the church he has he, he doesn't have anyone but he's calling outsiders and you're saying this speaking is speaking to outsiders yes so so this is fake behavior basically that's what you're saying that is what i should say uh because and it's not there in the quran you don't have any uh, teaching which says you can go and scream 
for the whole old neighborhood. No, no, no. You don't find even in uh, on our side. I will not talk for others, but on our side, it's not there. You cannot find it. Uh, we don't have such behaviors, and it's not called for to make that noise and uh, and uh, to disturb the public. It's not there. That's why, as as I told you now, even in the Middle East, countries like Dubai, countries like Saudi Arabia, now they are saying, no, 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 no. Your noise should stop in the mosque. People who are interested in these preachings, they have come to the mosque. Saudi Arabia has gone that far. Dr. Lujia, we need to take a break. When we return, we have this issue of uh, human manly efforts to fight fakes. Are we failing? Should we turn to God? Should we turn to the mosques and the churches to fight counterfeits uh, when we return? This is the second segment of our League of the Genuine discussion, uh, the very first discussion this year, 2022. We are here with uh, Dr. Suleiman Ruja, a Muslim scholar. I don't know why you don't call yourself a cleric. What, what's the difference? Scholar, cleric, do they mean the same? Uh, okay, although uh, I attend education on that side, but I'm using it uh, in elevating people's livelihoods. Uh, I'm in banking. I'm in the financial sector. Yes, so, as you have. So I cannot call myself. He heads uh, Islamic banking. He will be telling us today uh, what Islamic banking is about. Uh, do we have Christian banking, Indian banking? You, you'll explain that. But we broke off at a point where. Uh, just last night, I, I was seeing on the TV, on the NBS TV, I think, there was a report. Uh, the TV had uh, cracked a, a, a scam involving vaccination cards. You can imagine, corona vaccination cards. People were faking them. Uh, meaning that as human beings, we shall stop at nothing to fake and make that extra dime. So, my question is, don't you think that we should turn this fight against counterfeits to God? Because uh, as human beings, we are falling over each other, faking everything. Shouldn't we put this at the center of the religious faith to lead this crusade against counterfeits? Sure. Uh, w when we come on the side of Islam, in fact, Islam is a complete way of life. It's not just a religion. It's not just a religion. We talked about all those counterfeits. We, for example, if I can cite for you uh, some of the traditions of the Prophet, he fought traders who were faking the customers. Mangashana. So there was counterfeiting during the even in the Prophet itself during the time of the Prophet. Someone called himself a Prophet, Musaylam and Kazab. It happened during that time, but it's very easy to uh, to tell that this is uh, this is a fake prophet. You know, prophethood stopped with uh, we, in Islam. We believe in all the prophets of God who came. There are twenty-five. We know about twenty-five, and there are more than that. But after him, that chapter was closed. So, so you believe in time, the Christian prophets? Prophets. I'm talking about. You know, God is one, as Pastor said. But the way we understand him is different. Maybe for you, you understood that uh, you should pass through Christianity. The same God. 
I believe him. Even the same prophet, Solomon, is the same. We call him Sulaiman, Prophet Sulaiman in Islam. Musa, you call him Moses. Muhammad, you know him. Even your scripture is, is talking about him. Muhammad, those ones we are have known Muhammad divine. in the Bible. You, you know them. And if, if, uh, if, you, ho if you can ho host pastor back here, he will tell you about uh, all the prophets, the divine prophets. Okay? All the religious arrangements, they believe, they, we believe in the same God, but the way we understand him is different. But there are so many areas of, uh, of distinction and difference between uh, the Abrahamic religions, uh, Islam and uh, Christianity, for example, which for me, uh, I think is splitting of airs because if there is one God, uh, and then there is a disagreement between the Christians and the Muslims on the Trinity, for example. God the Father, God the Son. For you, you don't equate or see Jesus as a reincarnation of God. Uh, then the Christians see it that way. You believe Muhammad was the last prophet. Uh, you don't believe there is another Messiah coming for us, we think. Don't you think this differences between these religions that come out of Abraham. This confusion and this is what is bringing all these problems associated with religion and maybe even the faking. The faking is coming because we are not having a unitary interpretation and the way we look at things and yet the source is the same. The confusion is created by us, these people of this generation. But Jesus, or uh, uh, Isa, he knew Muhammad. Muhammad knew Jesus. There is no confusion. But they were in operating in different areas. Yes, in different areas. For them, they don't have the confusion, and the confusion is not there. The confusion is with us, people of this generation, because we have turned it into business. That's why we are creating the confusion even in the eyes of the people. No, but, but maybe I was reading somewhere this book here, this lady is a, a leading scholar on the different Abrahamic religions. Mm. Uh, she's quite knowledgeable. And uh, she was saying that uh, before Prophet Muhammad, the Muslims who pray three times and the Jews pray five times a day, they used to face Jerusalem because Jerusalem is also considered a, a holy Muslim site. Sure. But after the revelations uh, of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is that the correct way to say it? Sure, sure. If I don't say it, what happens? Peace be upon mm, him. Nothing. It is you to be rewarded when you say it. For him, is, he has peace and God has accepted him. So already. why do I have to say peace be upon him? To be rewarded. Him. So I'm going to be rewarded uh, you, for When that. you say it, you are rewarded. Okay. But uh, it doesn't so, add uh, anything to him. So now I, I want to show you the, 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 what you have called confusion. So after the revelations of Prophet Muhammad, uh, according to Dr. Karen, the Muslims stopped facing Jerusalem when they were praying. Mm. They now face the Kaaba. Makkah. Is it Mac Makkah? Mm. So, so you can see, I, I cannot imagine the Muslims praying, facing the same direction like, like the Jews. And then we have killed each other, that we are very different. So, so maybe... The, 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 the way the message came down from God, the, the different ways, is what has caused the problems? Uh, you see, uh, that's why I told you God is the same. We have the same God. Even in the Quran, uh, Prophet Muhammad himself and his followers, they used to face Jerusalem, as we have said. It was just uh, an abrogation, and, and, and that is normal when you come to Islam. Uh, uh, we can have a certain uh, belief then it is uh, abrog abrogation, you know abrogation. It was abrogated. Uh, it was a verse which came and abrogated the, the, what, the di that direction. You were facing towards the Jerusalem. Now you turn because he had issues. Uh, his enemies were facing the same direction who, who did not believe in him. So God allowed him to change the direction from Jerusalem Which to God? Kaaba. The same God? The same God. That the... God you believe in. So. That same God. 
So is it possible to reconcile these religious things? Because, for example, the, the Jews, um, Judaism does not believe in Jesus. Mm. For them, they think he's an ordinary guy. The rest of, uh, and in fact, I was reading somewhere that uh, after the death of Jesus, the Christians persecuted the Jews for having killed uh, Jesus. So uh, do you think that is a futile thing to have seamlessness and harmony in these, especially the Abrahamic religions? It appears the simmering, the confusion will continue. And as long as it continues at the top, maybe we shall be confused down here. You see, uh, the contradiction you cannot uh, uh, you cannot remove the contradiction. That one is that normal. one is a given. That one is God-given. Even you, you can contradict with your wife. You can contradict with your son. That one is normal. But the the, the, the problem is that the fight should not create a fight. The com that confusion we have in the mind should not create the fight between Muslims, for example, and Christians. No, no, because it is the same God we we, we serve. In fact, in that book, as you said, uh, uh, there are commonalities we have between all the religions. Don't steal all the Ten Commandments. You will find, you will find those commandments common in Islam, common in all Abrahamic faith, all in all divine faith, uh, divine arrangements. You find the same Ten Commandments. Why is it so? The same commandments in uh, Islam, the same commandments in Christianity, the same commandments. So, really, it should not, it should not cause a fight. Uh, it is only the understanding, and uh, you are not blamed for that. You, you believe the way you want, then God will be there to judge you when you reach him. So, but don't you think that uh, a lot of the religious intolerance that we have is a product of maybe ignorance and maybe even a perpetuation of counterfeit behavior? This intolerance and, and distinction we we have between us is it counterfeit behavior now, now thank god that we have the interreligious council of uganda mm. because these people now the mufti is sitting down with uh, the with the bishop the archbishop and others and even they have committees you have seen uh sheikh Mubaji was uh, the chairman now it has rotated is rotating thank god that we have the interreligious council now we we can sit to her we, we can sit down <coughs> that one shows that we have one common god god is the same now when it creates a fight it be it means that uh, now counterfeit you have has a forum come to a play when you allow that because it's the same god but why is it that for example you the muslims you are intolerant uh, you don't want non-muslims to bury your daughters for example they have to the man has to become a muslim it, or is, it, is that a teaching there of the prophet? Or you guys, you are just... Uh, uh, he, he was tolerant himself. In so fact, why we is have, it that we have marry, verses. Why, for you, why do you want to marry? Why is it marriage that you, you bring somebody, forward? If you somebody, you've mm. met them at university or something. Mm. Why should their religion be a, a, a barrier, a barricade to, to your relationship? Since we are the same, even from one God. Is the interreligious council looking at removing these barriers? I have seen it uh, among the, for example, you are Muslim. What is the chance that in your lifetime or your children's lifetime, any of your descendants or children mm. will marry the Aga Khan's granddaughter? The Aga Khan is a Muslim like you. He's Indian descent. Those two barriers. Yes. Indian descent, but he's Muslim and you can't, you, you cannot intermarry. You see, this is the scripture. It is a command. Just like I'm commanded to pray five times a day. That one also, that command come uh, in the old conglomerate of commands. That don't that, uh, mix. That uh, you don't mix because it's about faith. You see, it is acceptable in Islam. And uh, maybe if you host someone from Uganda Muslim Council, it will go deep. But uh, the, the, the limited knowledge I have, yeah. it is acceptable for a man, for me, to marry a non-Muslim. That one can be acceptable. Hey. Why? Because I will maintain, I will still have Islam. Is Islam will still command me. But there are higher chances that uh, 
if I allow my daughter or my sister to marry a non-Muslim, the man will have influence and will change her religion. And the that one is acceptable because start. the other one is the master of the home. But to a man, it is acceptable. Sheikhs, Islam can allow that. There are some extents where Islam can allow that. Because I will maintain my faith. But chances are that uh, if uh, a lady, my sister, my, 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 my daughter, marries a non-Muslim, because the other one will be now the master of this, okay, let's talk she can about change love. the faith. Now let's talk about love. You know love knows no religion, no race, no color. So if your sister loves a non-Muslim, you guys don't believe in love? We believe... Well, would, you, uh, would you block that relationship? If she's in love, that's the man she loves. The love? Yeah. The Islamic faith doesn't believe in love. Of course there is love. Yes, so yeah, if she is, loves is, mm. him, he's not a Muslim. That's it. No, no, no. Love will, be, uh, will, will not be acceptable if it is outside marriage. It should be marriage. Yes. Now, for example, you cannot claim, I cannot come start claiming that I love you because, it, the, because I'm a human being and you're a human being. I love your wife. Because of love, you yes. want to marry them. Me, that's my point. If the love is what sustains the proposed marriage, what's wrong with that? Uh, you see, uh, as, I, as I told you, this is a tenant. It is a you principle. Have to follow. I have to follow. That is the principle. Certain principles are... Uh, uh, rational, I can give the reason. S certain others are, uh, are not rational. You cannot reason. That's why I, I, I am a servant of God. A what does a servant mean? Sometimes you can accept to follow even what you don't understand. Talking even what about, your rationality. Yes. Talking about following what we don't understand. There's one thing I don't understand about God. Uh, from my reading, I have seen that uh, whereas as human beings, we standardize things, this is counterfeit, this is genuine, this is good standard. God does not appear to follow the human standardization. For example, <coughs> uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a very ordinary guy. He was illiterate. He was, sure. why did God choose somebody like that? Of all the people who lived with Prophet Muhammad, he chose just and him. illiterate. Look, look at uh, Moses. Musa. Yeah. Uh, Nondescript size, cannot talk. And he even complains, tries to take back the assignment and mm, say, I mm. cannot, why choose me? And God says, you know, uh, I, you, the interpretation will be done by your brother Aaron. And of course, we know Aaron was part of the, the one we call Harun, you see? Uh -huh. the same. Aaron. You but call him Aaron, Harun. why yeah. God chooses Aaron to be the interpreter, but it's the same Aaron who was leading the, the Jews again to idolat idolatry uh, every time Moses was away. So, this issue of uh, the mystery of, of, of God and how, how he does not uh, follow the human standard. Do you see an element there? Yes. I, I think... Uh, it was intentional that God chooses uh, such kind of people illiterate because counterfeit is uh, perpetuated by the intellectuals. For example, if it is you now, Council Fred Muema, you, you, you come and start claiming that you are a prophet, people will doubt. People will say that, ah, these people, these lawyers, uh, you see, these people, they, you, they can have doubt. Because you are talking philosophy, you, are, you stand uh, before the judges. It is talk very law, true. Mm, yeah, you law. Are, yeah, that is, that is true. But uh, God wanted to send someone who is nothing in the community, who was illiterate, such that his message can be carried. Now, if someone from the village, down there in your village, comes and starts talking, uh, talking philosophy, you didn't know uh, uh, about... Uh, even he, does, he doesn't know how to write, how to read. Now he's reading the I'll scriptures. I've been that day. Yes. He's reading, for example, if you look at the philosophy of the Quran, the science in the Quran, someone, an illiterate, start talking about those stories. If you go and read those scriptures, even to the same, the same case with Moses <coughs> and all the prophets. All the prophets, none was, uh, was illiterate. None was scientific. 
and yet there were literates, there were scholars. There were scholars time. there at that time. Wealthy people. That wealth. means that uh, maybe it is uh, us, the, the, the corporates, who are perpetuating the lies, perpetuating the counterfeits, perpetuating uh, the, the fake things. Originality, ori originality of God uh, is carried by those people who, are, who seem to be illiterate. And simple and yeah. ordinary. Mm. We're going to take a break, but before we take the break, <clears throat> another thing that uh, I have been developing, maybe counterfeiting is part of the original sin. We, we are prone to faking as human beings. We, 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 we love uh, faking. And again, from, from my reading, I have seen, for example, that the the Jews took 700 years, according to Dr. Karen here. The Jews took 700 years to accept Yahweh as God. 700 bloody years. They send this prophet, they go back. They, the, 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 the Baduns, the, the Arabs, just took them 25 years to, to accept Allah uh, as God, uh, which maybe gives the, the Muslims an S. Uh, over the Christians, who knows, uh, in terms of devotion. But the, the point here is that it appears we always, we have a faulty line always within us, within our DNA. We, we are prone to, to fall for the fake, for the alternative. We are looking for shortcuts. Is that something, as a Muslim scholar, that you have seen to be a tendency common to human beings? And that's why we are faking. Mm, that's why I told you, uh, on our side, because look at, uh, compare 700, look at that ratio, 700 to 25, quite big. Why, uh, this is why in Islam, uh, the counterfeit, in terms of religion, I told you, that in terms of religion, it is uh, at minimal, it is very small compared, and, to compared to Christianity. Because for us, we are created to be followers. We follow, and it is very, very easy to, 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 to identify a counterfeit in, his, in terms of when you come to the mosque. Because someone will have to read the Quran. The sheikh in the mosque will have to read you the Quran. About you it. cannot, no you cannot. And most of those ones who are counterfeit in our side, on our side, even they did not go to school. Go, out, go, go outside there and look at them. You, you can see, barely can you see someone who is a graduate to be a counterfeit or uh, going, so going mosques, around the TV. In the mosques, you don't have fake miracles bringing... We don't have them. We don't have them because it's very hard. It's very hard. Someone cannot just come and say, I am... Uh, 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 this is a miracle. You lame, cannot. No, 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 no. It's not there. We don't have it. And those ones who are, who, whom you are seeing fake, the fake shakes outside there, you cannot find a graduate claiming so. A graduate from any university around the world. Islamic University in Uganda, Islamic University in Medina, or uh, Egypt, or, or anywhere, claiming, going outside to heal people. No one there. No one outside there. And I have seen, uh, at the same time I have been reading, uh, Christianity is suffering uh, a lot of, uh, part of the flock, you know, is leaving. A lot of churches in Europe are being turned into discotheques, uh, warehouses. A few, I, I saw something in Tajikistan, some mosques were closed down. But it's happening a lot with the churches. People appear to be turning away from their religion and, and, and going into this. But the irony is that the churches in Africa, full. The mosques, full. What do you think is causing that? In Europe, in other places, they are closing. Here we are full. Is uh, it poverty? No, no, no. Even the level of ignorance. Because they have now, uh, these people are selling uh, hopes. Huh? Most of them were fake. They are selling hopes. Why do you think those fake, even in our side, those fake sheikhs, they have money, they can go and advertise on the TV? Because it is very expensive to go on the TV. But you find a genu the genuine sheikhs, they cannot afford it. Because they are selling, they are healing, people are buying those duas, people they are buying, uh, they, they are buying those supplications from them, they are buying hopes. And that one is, uh, is common in Africa, but in Europe, you cannot fake around. People can identify a fake from a genuine. We've got to take a break.
uh, when we come back, we are going to ask your opinion whether the future of religion is fake or genuine. And then we need to go to your professional side. We need to talk about Islamic banking sure. and counterfacing business when we return. Uh, welcome to the third part, uh, last segment of our discussion. By the way, I didn't explain. We have some onions here. Uh, it's a very good therapy for the common flu and uh, viruses. I'm sure you're feeling better sure. since you uh, came here. You can use it at home as well. Now, as an Islamic investment banker, what is Islamic banking? And we have Christian banking. Uh. Thank you, Council. You see, even uh, the commercial world has turned into fakeness, counterfeits. Before, church, not Islam, not the Islamic institution. No, no, no. Church had the influence on banking before, in Europe. Banking started in Europe with the influence of the church. Then somewhere, somehow, the church lost the influence on banking and other financial sectors. They, they separated religion from commerce. And that is what is called secularization. It's a term which is very well known uh, world over. Secularization. Secularization means the detachment of religion from faith. Religion, they mean church influence. And when, they, when the church lost influence on banking, what I mean here, not owning banks, because you can find a church owning a bank. That is another thing. In fact, it is uh, conniving with the, 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 the ordinary system. So if vision. a church owns a bank, are they practicing Christian banking? No, 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 no. That is not. Uh, we mean Christian banking, Islamic banking is coming up with the tenants, the principles of lending, the principles in recovery, the principles of the whole setup, the institution so of banking. So what are the tenants of Islamic banking? Ah, this is what, uh, in fact, when Islamic <coughs> banking came back, when church lost influence, now Islamic banking came uh, around the 70s there. And you remember during the financial crisis, the Vatican, Pope, Pope during that time it was Pope Francis, Pope, no, no, Pope Benedict the 16th. They, they carried out a research because most of the banks collapsed in the Middle East. Most of the giant banks, the banks we have, the banks here, Standard Chartered, those ones, they nearly collapsed. JP Morgan, Citigroup. Now, uh, but the Islamic banks, the Islamic financial institutions were not affected by the financial crisis. Vatican carried out a research to, to find out what really is inside Islamic finance, Islamic banking. He came up with a landmark statement, you can go and read about it. Pope Benedict the 16th, he said the ethical principles. Now, what, this is what Islamic banking is bringing back. The ethical principles on which Islamic finance is based may bring banks closer to their clients and to the true spirit which should mark every financial service. You see, now this is Pope recommending uh, Islamic finance to dominate in the banking sector, in the capital market, in the insurance. That's why you see even uh, Christian banks, uh, even uh, uh, the, the, the secular banks, most of them they are adopting either window or a subsidiary for Islamic. So in Islamic banking, you don't charge interest, you give money for free? It is just ethical. We are saying it is ethical banking. We sit together with you, we agree. In fact, we are doing trading. Trading is ethics. So you, are, trading is you ethics. become equity partners. You uh -huh, get a stake yes. in the business. I am going to do a maize meal. I hope to produce 100 bags every week make so much money take 30 percent i take sure that is it in that's the, islamic in the, banking if, if yes that is islamic finance islamic banking 
If you make profit, we share according to our pre-agreed profit sharing ratio. If we make losses, now the financial institution will be ready to sit with you. This is what we call ethics. We, to sit with you and, uh, uh, and also share with you in the losses. So if the maize meal gets burnt and everything goes to ashes, you put in 100 million. As an Islamic banker, you lose your money? That you is don't go for, for, for my house? Which I put as uh, it depends on the contract we use. Because of the fakeness, the counterfeit, even in people, in the, our customers, you find that uh, those genuine, uh, those real Islamic, true Islamic finance products are rarely used by even the Islamic financial institutions because of the fakeness. Because you can fake the fire, because you can fake the accident. It happens in Uganda here, you know it. Someone can burn his house. Someone can burn his car. So because of such, uh, 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 these Islamic financial institutions so, sometimes so, they are influenced. <laughs> there. So even the faking has affected Islamic banking? It has affected Islamic banking. That's why we have to come out, even the Islamic institutions, uh, the Islamic side, to, 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 to counter or to fight counterfeit and uh, fakeness. Because it so, is affecting even... Uh, the, 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 the Islamic finance, the real Islamic finance, the true picture, how we have to... Because it has, be to be profit, yeah. because it has to be profit sharing. Profit and loss sharing. But you find that because of the fakeness in the communities, even when, when you go outside here, people will ask you, how, but in Uganda here, can you share the losses with the customer? Who will report they will the leave profits? out the losses with you. <laughs> and under declare of... People burning their houses. People burning their own cars. So that fakeness... Or oh, stealing. Mm. I know of a case where somebody had a warehouse. I think they were doing a warehouse receipt system. And he organized with some thugs to climb up and they stole the, <laughs> <laughs> they stole the goods. So the case is still in court uh, mm. with the insurance. Mm. So, so basically you are saying, and this is one of my biggest quarrels with the banking sector. The banking sector is financing counterfeit business. And we are saying, as part of the KYC, sure. you must make sure that the profiling of the kind of business, the profiling of the customer, the profiling of the source of the, of the goods, the profiling of the practices, the trade practices, the ethics, is central. It's not sufficient for a lender to just say, you are going to do poultry, uh, how many trays will you produce of eggs, so many, without taking care to know what kind of product will be put on the market. We have an issue there. How is Islamic banking tackling counterfeit trade? Uh, you see... Because you have a lot of Muslim faithfuls sure. who are in the trade sector. And I will tell you without fear of contradiction, many are dealing in counterfeits and they are coming to you for money. How are you putting a stop to that? You see, uh, Islamic banking people know it, uh, know, know Islamic banking about, what they know about Islamic banking is interest, prohibition of interest. But Islamic finance, Islamic banking is going beyond the confines of just interest. Interest is prohibited even in uh, the Bible, in all religious, divine arrangement in interest, the Bible, interest, interest, is interest is prohibited yes now so it's in addition to for a bank to charge interest yes uh, uh, in addition to interest there is uh, uncertainty excessive uncertainty is prohibited in islamic banking excessive uncertainty huh? you see ambiguity that is the ambiguity excessive ambiguity but how do you avoid the doctor how do you avoid uncertainty you are operating a hotel and then Corona came, and they closed the economy for two years. How do you? That is nature. That is uh, uh, that is known. It is by nature. It is uh, God who brought coronavirus. But I'm talking about, for example, someone investing in speculation. He does not work anywhere. For him, is just investing in, for example, arbitration uh, on the differences in dollars. That is his own. That is his business. So Islamic finance is prohibiting that. Is Islamic finance is prohibiting unethical businesses, as you have said. For example, most of the traders in Kampala here, they, they are in uh, fake products. They go to China, they choose fake, degrade 
for me, uh, I want a product. You say they are, they are saying in China, I want this one which is downgraded. Downgraded, mm. and then they get packaging to show it's high grade. Islam prohibited that. And Islamic finance, Islamic banking, I cannot finance. If I know that your business is doing such, I am not allowed to finance such a business. But how come they are being financed up to that now? That is conventional. This, you have to allow Islamic finance play in this Uganda. Thank God that we have it operational in microfinance support center. The banking sector has delayed and necessarily delayed. <coughs> You know, banks are skeptical for them. They are profit maximizers. They are just thinking about profit. That's why they are delaying, because they are, uh, their motivation is profit maximization. But thank God that we have institution, the institution I'm working with now, the microfinance support center, is not just looking at profit. Just uh, it, it looks beyond profit. It looks at, for example, the change of livelihood, the change of people's standards of living, and, and that is the real Islamic finance. That is the real Islamic finance. So, uh, 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 Islamic finance is, uh, is against the counterfeit. And that's why you find that the, most of the projects we finance now, we have to go down and see what business are you doing. It's not like, like now sitting here and uh, you, you write a proposal, you forward it, you bring the Korato. No, no, no. no. This is the not what you are doing. The banker comes here, mm. gets to understand what you're doing. So, so where can somebody <coughs> who is listening uh, access five Islamic banking services? Yes, now we, we are having it in microfinance support center. We is have it a, a bank. A, uh, microfinance support center is a, a government agency. Is it like a bank? It's uh, operating under the Ministry of Finance. It was put by the government of Uganda to offer microcredit funds and business so development it services. Money. It lends money. You see all these government programs, MIOGA, operations, wealth creation. So can a private individual go to sure, your center? Sure, and sure, borrow? sure. You have an SME, you are SME, small and medium enterprise. You have circles. You have uh, uh, credit unions. You have teachers associations. All of those, they can come to microfinance so, support center and access affordable financing credit. What's your, oh, no interest? That's under Islamic banking. Yeah, under Islamic unit, now uh, the, the unit I'm managing, Islamic investment, Islamic unit, we shall sit down with you and do it Islamically. Uh, do you have to be a Muslim to access Islamic no, 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 banking? No, no. In fact, uh, if you go to our portfolio, 90% of the beneficiaries are not Muslims. Uh, we are just changing people's lives. And the funder, the biggest funder of this portfolio, Islamic Development Bank, is looking at uh, changing people's lives. Change, uh, for example, you, you cannot afford food. Can you afford food? You see, Islam serves uh, Muslims and non-Muslims alike. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be upon him, he used to interact, he did business with non-Muslims. So that's why I told you, even when you go to those countries like Malaysia, uh, you find the, 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 most of the beneficiaries from Islamic finance are non-Muslims. The Chinese, they are not Muslims. Wow. That is the tolerance we are talking about. But then you're not, uh, this information is not known. Now, until you spoke uh, and, uh, now, uh, I that, that one has been uh, a challenge. But now we are going to come out. Since we have established uh, now a unit, we have got a structure. W now we have the Islamic finance investment as a unit. It is going to promote it. We are going to come to the media, start telling, out, telling people about uh, the goodness but in Islamic this finance. microfinance support center, is it the one also which licenses money lenders? Uh, we are not uh, regulators. Uh, we are, we are, uh, a regulator, we have a regulator, uh, the Uganda Microfinance Regulatory Authority, which is there. That's the one which regulates yeah. money lenders. Look at us as, for example, Uganda Development Bank. You know it. Uganda Develop UDB, Uganda Development Bank. That one is uh, uh, in the big sectors. Now this one, microfinance support center going and supporting people down people who are on the earth for example the microfinance institutions uh even those money lenders uh even uh, the, the 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 cooperatives the cooperatives uh the the circles the saving and credit cooperative societies my question is uh coming from an angle of islamic banking how possible is it for a muslim to be a money lender and ask for 10 percent 20 percent per month can the two sit together? 
you are a Muslim and then you are lending and asking for 10% per month. That is against the tenets of Islam, money lending, that business. You are sitting there and lending money. It means you are not doing any economic activity. It is not acceptable in Islam. You are Islam, Islam allows someone, if you need returns, to go and engage in business, have effort in the business undertaking of the customer, accept risks, and accept also liability. If you cannot accept those three, then you are not allowed to assume any return from the client, from the customer. So it is fake. It is fake to, to lend money and, and uh, ask for and interest, ask for, irrespective for of it. corona, irrespective of... Sure, sure. Because you are not co causing any difference in people's lives. You need to go and engage with that person. You need to have an effort. You need to cause to show some economic activity. But Dr. Aluja, I know you have a background of commercial banking, not just Islamic banking. And you've worked in the traditional commercial banks for many years. So you are here condemning what you've been working, uh, working with the commercial banks. Because from what you're saying, you, this interest and uh, all these predatory practices by some banks are both unethical, maybe even they border on illegal. So how comfortable are you with, with what you're saying and what you've been doing? Uh, you see, you cannot be an Islamic banker until you're a banker. You cannot. You cannot, be a, you cannot claim. In fact, it is, first of all, it is banking before it becomes Islamic. So you need to know something we are talking about. A good ba Islamic banker would be a ba should be a banker. You should come from the bank to talk about something you know. It's not just a theory. It, is, it has to be practice. And by the way, when I was there, I was also the head of Islamic banking department. So for you, you have banking. never charged interest? Uh, we, have, we had a window. We have a window in that bank for Islamic, although the banks have delayed. And that, by the way, that one caused my, uh, my move because it has delayed in the banking sector. They are looking at profit maximization. Now I decided to go here where they are also looking at social service and business development of the partners. They are treating customers as partners. So uh, that one Which helped me. Which is what we are lacking, really. Yes. This one helped me to know uh, how, how better I can serve my community. Because in microfinance support centers, is, as I told you, it's not about profit. It's the change. It goes beyond the profit. How many people now, the widows, can have a, a small businesses? SMEs can do some businesses. How many people now can live beyond one dollar? That is what, that is our funder, the main funder, the government of Uganda, is looking at that. Have you caused change, certain change <coughs> in people's lives? Or, 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 if, you, if I come back with 10 billion as profit, that is not enough. And I will, uh, maybe my contract will not be renewed. We look beyond profit. There is social service government is looking at and other funders like uh, Islamic Development Bank. I wish all Uganda. bankers could... Uh, act the way you are talking, you know, because it's a real, real, real uh, menace uh, out there with the banks. Uh, sure. Yes, they are providing credit, but a lot desires to be done. I cannot leave you before we talk about uh, counterfeits as an impediment to financial inclusion. A lot of our people are unbanked. They are not in the financial sector. And there are many efforts to try and include them to stop this financial exclusion. I mean, there are people who, who live, they go through a whole week without touching money and, and they are breathing and eating. Now, how is counterfeiting an impediment to financial inclusion? And what steps can be taken to enhance the penetration of financial inclusion vis-a-vis -vis counterfeits? You see, uh, I'll talk about what I know. The solution should only be adoption of Islamic finance, Islamic financing. Because really, when you go back to the principles, don't forget what the Pope said, the ethical principles on which Islamic finance is best may bring banks closer to their clients and to the true spirit spirit spiritual 
So you're saying banks mark. are not close to their clients? Not, yeah. not if, uh, if, if you don't have... I gave you the money, I want it back. I, I don't want to know about your, your excuses, about your corona, please bring back. And if you don't pay, uh, uh, you, you find that interest is going to be compounded and compounded. In fact, it's creating more burden. Loans have been restructured. But uh, customers think that it is a relief. It was not a relief. In fact, it, is, it has created more burden. Banks have extended the period of payment. If it was three years now, you pay in five years. For, for you, you think that it is a relief. It is more burden. So the solution is only Islamic finance. And uh, as you have seen, for example, other sectors like bank assurance, agent banking. By the way, those two amendments came along with Islamic finance. Those amendments were what done. Bank lawyer. assurance. Bank assurance for uh, that is uh, where the banks uh, can provide insurance services outlets. You see, uh, agent banking. You know it where yeah. you bank. Uh, you find banks, uh, bank banking services at petrol stations, at pharmacies, and all of that. You are a lawyer. Those amendments came together. There were five. In fact, there were five. But the most known, there are three: agent banking, bank assurance, and Islamic banking. You, you, we have to fight and see that uh, Islamic finance is operational in all sectors, not only at cooperative level, like level in microfinance support center and uh, in uh, circles, cooperatives. We have, to, we, we have to have it also in the banking sector. That is when our people will uh, really benefit. How, how has mobile money affected the rollout of Islamic banking? I, I, I know about mobile money a lot. Sure. I, I have done a lot of public interest litigation in that area. Uh, I'm one of the, the private sector players who uh, led to the passing of that uh, law sure. uh, to ensure the, the national payment systems <coughs> using mobile money. The largest platform uh, as it goes uh, in the country now, it still has issues, but seeing the benefits that we can reap from Islamic banking, do you see mobile money as a threat? or a hindrance to Islamic in, in fact, it is complementing. Those three, they are not competing. You, you cannot say because your question, as if you say that mobile money is here, Islamic banking is here, they are fighting. No, they are complementing. As you see, uh, for example, Islamic banking institutions and maybe the public outside there. And uh, in some quarters, people think Islamic banking is against the institution of banking. It is competing. It, no, it is com just complementing. A big percentage, you know, in our Uganda, Muslims constitute more than 14%, and that is what is in records, UBOS, Uganda Bureau of Statistics, more than 14% of this population. And I can confirm to you, more than 40% of the Muslim population in Uganda, they do not borrow. That is what is on record, but I'm, yeah, I'm sure more Why than 70% because of uh, the unethical nature of conventional finance. Now, most of the people are unbanked. They are not using banking. They are not using uh, <coughs> financial institutions. Now, the solution is only one, to bring Islamic finance operational in the banking sector. It's, this is not about religion. When we have UK, United Kingdom being the champion now, you go and read about UK. About Islamic banking. It, it, is, uh, it is becoming the global gateway. The term is called global gateway for Islamic finance. Russia, the same, Luxembourg, Japan, uh, 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 Austria, uh, Spain, Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, even in South Africa. So the thing has been accepted the world over. Uganda is just uh, 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 lacking. Accepting the, slowly. Uh, it is accepting slowly. Now we see in a microfinance support center, we are doing it, thank God. Since 2017, we have disbursed more than 49%. As at 31st of December, 31st of June, 30th of June 2000 and, uh, 2019, we had disbursed up to around 49 billion. So now we need also other players, other sectors to come on board, like banking. Wow. Uh, that is when we can, we can have ethics back into business. So Islamic banking is ethics banking. That's what I've learned. Ethical banking ethical. because when we sit down and we analyze the business you are going to do the undertaking what are you going to do how can we benefit what is the feasibility study even i will help you in doing it because i have this is the technical the business support we are providing in islam in the microfinance support center 
we sit down with you, we, we train but you. Are you also regulated by Bank of Uganda? Uh, no, the no, no, same no, no, Bank no. of Uganda which regulates the, the banks which charge interest, regulates you? No, 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 no. no. This is uh, government. Uh, Who is, is the regulator? It is, the uh, president? Uh, the regulator is uh, itself. In fact, uh, government programs of alleviating poverty are passing through here. If you go to the bureaucracy, you bypass BOU because not by law it regulates the financial sector. Uh, uh, it has uh, its own mandate. It's not like a bank. This is not a bank like the typical commercial banks we have. It's, it has its own mandate. Now, don't ask me, for example, church. If the church they collect, if they have a scheme of saving their money, are they regulated by, uh, by, by Bank of Uganda? No, no, no. They have another mandate. We are not uh, against BOU, but uh, we are self-regulated. Maybe the laws in future will change and uh, return it to, to be regulated. That is when uh, maybe in the future. But now, it is uh, a government program. Doctor, we must stop here. Your New Year message to Christians, Muslims, uh, Buddha, atheists, uh, whoever. Your New Year message uh, in respect of counterfeits and coexistence. Uh, in fact, all divine arrangement, I should say, my message, all divine arrangement, whether Christianity, whether Islam, all the divine arrangements are against counterfeit and uh, fake products. This is a call for all efforts from government, religious institutions, and the general public at large uh, to fight the counterfeits and to see that we have originality. In everything we have to be original, original, original. That is when uh, uh, we can serve our God well. Thank you for hosting me. That has been Dr. Suleiman Strok Solomon Luja, um, an investment banker, a Muslim scholar. Uh, he has shared insights uh, about Islamic banking, counterfeiting, the different uh, beliefs that we might have, Muslims, Christians, we are all one. We are all God's children. Uh, we thank you so much for making the time. I should be visiting you soon for Islamic banking services. Sure. Uh, quite interesting. Uh, but I think you need to do more for, for people to understand exactly what uh, Islamic banking is about. You had uh, his message, you cannot be doing Islamic banking or any banking of any nature while counterfeiting at the same time. So until next episode, I uh, would like to end here. I welcome you to the new year. Uh, Happy New Year. We hope it will be peaceful, prosperous, and let's turn back to God uh, if we are uh, to live a full life, a full life which is counterfeit free. So until next episode, uh, don't be fake, always buy and sell genuine.